Hey, great job, guys. So far, let's keep up the good work. Uh, today, we're going to start stoichiometry. Now, stoichiometry is what we're going to end with. So we're on the last topic of what we're going to do uh, for, us, for the rest of this semester. So let's go ahead and start. Now, looking at stoichiometry, it sounds like it's big. It's a long process. But if we show our work, which I'm going to require you to do, you just can't write down the answer. you got to show all your work how you got everything, so how you balance the chemical equation and everything else, how we got come up with the molar mass, all those different things. So let's make sure that we stay on top of those things and we write everything down. Now, what I did at the beginning of this, I gave you all the steps that we have. Now, these steps may not be there all the time. So you need to know how to do it, okay, without looking at the steps. So we're going to start off with writing the skeleton equation. So we're going to write a skeleton equation. Then we're going to go ahead and balance that skeleton equation. After we balance that skeleton equation, then we can go ahead and start our stoichiometry. We're going to start with the mass that we have in the problem. And then we're going to convert that to the mass of some other compound or element within the problem. And we're going to do that by using our molar ratio. And then that converts it from moles to moles. And we'll tell you really how to do that. Now, I think you'll understand uh, relatively quickly how to do that and at the end we have to make sure we convert it back into the grams but at the very end we got to make sure that we have it in the correct amount of significant figures and I always said significant figures is one of the things that's in the original problem so we have to make sure that we look at that and maybe write that down first to help us out because we don't want to forget that and lose some easy points so each one of these is probably worth about 10 points a piece uh, and uh, they could be worth worth more than that on our assessment at the end you're going to have one or two of these problems, and the whole thing's going to be worth 100 points. So if you have two, it's 100 points, uh, and each one's worth 50 points. So, and we're going to include all the work. You can get partial points. But remember, you will be able to ask me questions on that assessment. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the, uh, the question itself. And the first part of the question says, nitrogen and hydrogen, so nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas, will react together to form ammonia gas. Now, I didn't tell you what the formula for nitrogen gas was or hydrogen gas. I did give you the formula for ammonia gas. Now, it doesn't say that nitrogen is a gas or hydrogen gas, but I can tell you what, they're gases. Uh, they're non-metals and we know what they are. So let's go ahead and write, start writing that out. So we're going to start off by going our nitrogen. We have nitrogen. And anytime that we have an element all by itself, we have to ask, what is the formula? Is it just N or is it N2? Is it diatomic? Well, if we look at our periodic table, and if we looked at our periodic table, we'd see that nitrogen is one of our seven elements that are diatomic. So we're going to go ahead and put in our, our, our two there. Then that is going to be added to hydrogen. Now hydrogen itself, is that diatomic? question is yes it is so or the answer is so we know that it's diatomic also then we're going to put our handy dandy uh, arrow once we put our arrow in there we can put it's going to form that's our product is going to be ammonia gas which is going to be NH3 so there is our our uh, skeleton equation so our skeleton equation is, means it's the unbalanced chemical equation. So now we have to balance it. So how do we balance it? By balancing it, we're going to go ahead and we're going to, over here, I have N nitrogen. And at the time, I have two. Okay. So we're just going to uh, put that in there. And then I have hydrogen on this side. And I have two. Okay. Now how to get the two? Well, this subscript says I have two nitrogen. This subscript says two hydrogen. I go to the other side, nitrogen, there's no subscript, there's no, nothing in front of it, so we're going to say there's one. Okay, go back to the other side, I have hydrogen, and now there is a subscript of a three, so there are three hydrogens. So what we're going to start off with first, I always like to start off a lot of times with the first element, with the first element that's there, and that's going to nitrogen. I have two on this side. I have one on this side. The only thing that we can change, we can't change the subscripts, remember, so we can change the coefficients. So we're going to put a two right here in front of this, which means that 
Now, instead of having one nitrogen, I'm going to cross this off. Well, X before I cross that off. I'm just going to go over here, and I have two. So now we're going to go ahead and get rid of this and put a straight through. So I know that I have two left over. But that also changed my hydrogen. So instead of having three hydrogens, I now have three times two, so I have six. And I'm going to get rid of that. So now we're going to chase it to the other side. My nitrogen is good, so we're going to change the hydrogen. So I have two on this side over here, right? So I have two right here. So what coefficient can I put right there to make it six? So what times two equals six? And that answer to that is three. So once I put a three there, I know that now I have six and I can straight through that. So now everything is balanced. So there is my uh, balanced chemical equation. Now again, remember there's no number right here in front of the nitrogen, but if there was a number, it would be one. So our molar ratio is one to three to two. Okay, we don't have to write that down. It's right there, okay, unless I ask you to write it down. And I could put down my uh, molar ratio is going to be 1 to 3 to 2. Okay. Now, what does that actually mean? I don't think we talked too much about it when we did our uh, balancing chemical equations. Well, this means that if I have one mole of nitrogen and I use three moles of hydrogen, I can get two moles of nitrogen gas. Okay, which means that that ratio says that really in this in this equation, one mole of nitrogen gas equals two moles of ammonia. So when the question asks if I can go from nitrogen to how many ammonia, I can. And that's what our next step is. So let's go ahead and do what our next step says. We're going to start the uh, stoichiometry. So let's go down here and we're going to start with what we have in the equation. So the question that we have in the, in the question itself, it says if 56 grams of nitrogen are used uh, up by the reaction, how many grams of ammonia will be, will be produced? So we're gonna start right off with our 56.0 grams of nitrogen. And then as always, we're converting from this to something else. So we have to use our antidemi times oops and our line. So we're going to put our times and our line in there. And on bottom, I can tell you right, right now, we are since I started off with grams here, I'm going to put grams in the bottom. And I'm doing that so I can get rid of that, so I can cancel it out. So I'm going to put grams of N2. lowercase g, and we're going to tab that over. On top, we're going to put down one mole. So we're going to use our molar mass right here. So we're going to say that this is one mole of N2. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and underline that. Okay, so now we have to figure out the number of grams that are in one mole of nitrogen gas. So we're going to come over here, and I'm going to go that I have nitrogen gas. So I have nitrogen. How many times? Two. So we're going to put a two, a two in there. And we're going to multiply that by the molar mass. Now, how do we get the molar mass? Well, let's go ahead and see if we can figure out what the molar mass is. And I'm just going to move this off to the side for just a second. Get rid of this. Move that down. We'll get rid of that. And we're going to come into here. And I'm going to pull something up. So in my handouts, we're going to go ahead and pull up our beginning packet. Okay, so here's our packet. And I'll get back to the other one. So let's go ahead and, and scroll down to our periodic table. Once we get to our periodic table, we can see that we have nitrogen gas right here. Nitrogen gas is 14. Okay, so let me go ahead and get rid of that and pull this back up. 
So our molar mass of nitrogen for one nitrogen is 14, but we have it times two, so that's going to equal 28 grams per N2. So that's our molar mass, so that goes on bottom. So we're going to put 28 right there. So one mole of nitrogen gas equals 28 grams. Now, I like to go ahead and get rid of what we can get rid of at this point. So we're going to go ahead and I have grams of nitrogen gas on top here, grams of nitrogen here. So I'm going to get rid of both of those. So we're going to just straight through. And again, anything that I have on top and bottom, I can get rid of. So we're going to straight through it. So now I'm in moles of nitrogen gas, but I got to get to ammonia. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to use our molar ratio. So our molar ratio is this right here. So we're, we're going to go one mole of nitrogen gas equals two moles of nitrogen, of ammonia, excuse me. So what do we put on bottom? Well, we have a top and bottom. So on bottom, we're going to put one mole of nitrogen gas. Okay, and we're doing that because now we can cross this out. So I can go ahead and strike that through. And I can strike this through. Now, most of the time I like to put what's on top. Now, one mole of nitrogen gas equals how many moles of ammonia? In this, it's going to say two. So we're going to put down up, up here. We're going to put down two moles of N, excuse me, N, H, 3. And again, we're going to go ahead and underline this. Just because we have it, our times and our line, same thing. And we got rid of that. Now I have it in moles of ammonia. But it's asking for it in grams of ammonia. So we're going to go ahead and put another times and a line. And since I have it in this, and now we're going to use our molar mass, one mole of ammonia equals how much? So on the bottom, we're going to put down our one mole of N. Excuse me, NH3. Okay, and that's because I want to have it right here. So I have it there, I got to get rid of it. Now I got to figure out my molar mass for ammonia. So, how do we figure out our molar mass for ammonia? Well, we're going to go, we have nitrogen in it, and we have one nitrogen. We're times that by 14, and that's going to equal 14. Okay. What about our next one? Well, we have hydrogen, right? So we're going to put hydrogen in there. We have three hydrogens. Each hydrogen is worth one. Now, again, how did we get that? We go back to our pairing table. There it is. Hydrogen is one. Okay, so we'll go back to that. Three times one equals three. So we're going to add these together. 14 plus three. Okay, and that's going to equal... So my molar mass for ammonia is going to be 17 grams for NH3. So where does that go? Well, this I can I can uh, copy that. And I can go ahead and just paste it right there. And then we're going to we're going to uh, underline that. And so now I can get rid of what uh, is on top and bottom. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of this. Strike through. Get rid of this. Now notice that the only thing I have left is grams of nitrogen gas. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put uh, my equal sign. And I'm just going to drop this down just a little bit. And I know that I can pull this back. Look at them. There we go. And I'm going to put down, uh, I'm going to paste that again, but I'm going to get rid of this number right here. So I know that it's going to be in grams of this because this is the only unit that I have left. If that's the only unit that I have left, I've gotten rid of everything else, so that's got to be my answer. So let's look at that. Is that the correct, is what I need? Grams of ammonia. Well, look back at the question. It says, how many grams of ammonia will be produced? How many? There we go. That's what we need. So now all we have to do is go ahead and do the math. So if we bring up our calculator, okay, um, we're going to say that we have 56, 
So we're going to multiply by 1, divide by 28, multiply by 2, divide by 1, multiply by 17, divide by 1. Now the thing about it is, is anytime we have 1, we don't have to do it. So we're going to omit those steps and see what we come up with. So we have 56.0, and we're going to divide that by 28. Then we're going to multiply that by 2. Then we're going to multiply that by 17. That equals 68. So I'm going to go ahead and go right down here. I'm going to have 68. That's what the calculator says. But let's do it one more time. This time we're going to add the ones and see if that makes any difference. So 56.0 okay, times 1 divided by 28 times 2 divided by 1 times 17 divided by 1 equals 68. Okay. So I could go ahead and highlight that and say there's my answer. Our problem is I'm not done. What's the last step? Round to the correct number of significant figures. So we go back to the original problem. We look at the number, and we, there's our number right there. How many significant figures are there? Well, we know that trailing zeros are not significant unless there's a decimal in the number. <coughs> in this case, we have a decimal. So we have to go ahead and say there's three significant figures. So we know that it needs three, but this is only two. So how do we get our third one? Well, we just go ahead and add a zero and a decimal. That becomes significant. Now we can go ahead and highlight this. And we say, there's our answer. We're all done. That's it. Question number one is over with. Yes, it was a little bit long. Yes, we had to show all of our work. But when you show all your work, get everything right, you're going to be able to come up with the right answer. So that's how we do this one. Look forward to seeing the second question, see if you got it right. As always, go Mohawks. Nelson out.